Today on Fast Food Origins we are going to talk about the origin of Long John Silver. But before we get started be sure to subscribe to the Fast Food Origins channel and let us know in the comments below what fast food restaurant origins you would like to know more about. So let's get right into it. Long John Silver's is the biggest quick service seafood restaurant brand in the United States. The chain's more than 1,200 locations, spread over 36 states, with a nautical theme and a menu that features breaded fish, sandwiches, french fries, coleslaw, hush puppies, corn, and desserts in addition to the chain's signature batter-dipped fish, chicken, and shellfish. The corporation owns and operates around 60% of the U.S. locations, the remaining 40%, along with all 28 foreign locations, are franchisees. More than 120 of the American locations are co-branded locations with an NW All-American Food location. Long John Silver's origins can be traced back to 1929, when Shelbyville, Kentucky resident Jerome Letterer started the White Tavern Shop, a six-seat hamburger joint. Throughout the Great Depression, the idea was successful and grew in popularity. There were 13 White Tavern shops in total before World War II destroyed 10 of them due to a lack of meat, sugar, and labor. In order to promote 15-cent roast beef sandwiches, Letterer reorganized in 1946 and changed the name of his business to Jericho Inc. He also opened a new restaurant in Lexington called Jerry's Five and Dine. When Letterer realized that customers would not spend that much for a roast beef sandwich, he changed the emphasis of Jerry's menu to hamburgers in 1947. In 1948, Letterer appointed Warren W. Rosenthal to oversee his restaurants as he rebuilt his business. According to rumors, Rosenthal and Letterer first spoke when Rosenthal, a student at the University of Kentucky, rented a room from Letterer. Rosenthal eventually agreed to Letterer's request to work with him in the restaurant industry, despite his initial consideration of professions in life insurance and retail. The two men soon began exploring for restaurant ideas that they could implement all around the nation. By modifying food service concepts taken from restaurants in other cities, they experimented with new menu ideas at Jerry's. Jericho's timing was ideal as the trend of eating out and the expansion of the restaurant industry in general were just getting started. One of the earliest businesses to adopt the franchise model as a way to spur growth was Jericho, which by 1957 was running seven Jerry's restaurants. When Letterer passed away in 1963, Rosenthal, who had been appointed Jericho's chief executive officer, eventually took over as president and acquired ownership of the business as well. Jericho's ability to come up with ideas and take chances has contributed to the company's success in the food service sector. In fact, the business experimented with a number of restaurant concepts in the 1960s, including Lots, Davies Dock, Don Q's, and The Governor's Table. Rosenthal was therefore motivated in 1969 to test a new market for quick-service seafood in order to compete with the traditional American staples of hamburger, pizza, and fried chicken. In order to help develop the idea for an enlarged version of fast food fish and chips, Rosenthal recruited James Patterson, a franchisee of Jerry's Restaurant, to join him at Jericho after researching the competition especially the menu at the H. Salt Fish and Chips chain. Patterson was elected as Long John Silver's first president. In 1969, shortly after going public with Jericho, Rosenthal introduced Long John Silver's Fish and Chips, which took its name from Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. The first restaurant, called LJS, opened on Southland Drive in Lexington and quickly became Jericho's most lucrative venture. More than 200 LJS units were in use by the end of 1971. The interiors of the outlets were decorated with brass lanterns, signal flags, and boat oars to simulate a seafood restaurant along a dock. The original menu included chicken, french fries, hush puppies, and battered fish. Rosenthal acted swiftly to broaden LJS's menu, implementing a more extensive line of seafood to supplement its batter-dipped fillets. However, after realizing that rival H. Salt had a quite constrained selection and was having financial troubles, in order to better reflect this expanded cuisine, the chain's name was changed to Long John Silver's Seafood Shops in 1973. Ernest E. Renaud, Jericho's executive vice president since 1971, took over as president of LJS at this time. There were 621 LJS restaurants open and running by June 1976. Of these, 359 were franchised to independent operators who paid a fee to Jericho for the idea and paid their own building and operating expenses while 262 were owned directly by Jericho. The total number of stores increased to 1,000 within two years, 464 of which were company-owned. Jericho moved its operations from four facilities dispersed throughout Lexington to a new $7 million headquarters in May 1978. The early and middle 1980s saw changes in the LJS's top management. In addition to his responsibilities as LJS president, Renaud was appointed president of the parent firm Jericho in 1982. Rosenthal continued to serve as chairman of the board. 
Johnny Tobe, who had served as LJS's CFO since the early 1970s, succeeded Renaud in 1984. The 1980s saw rapid growth at LJS as the amount of company-owned development expanded. By 1987, LJS accounted for over 75% of Jericho's total revenues and 80% of its operational profits. By 1984, Jericho owned 812 of the 1,355 LJS locations. The business had 1,421 locations and $451 million in reported sales that year, accounting for nearly 65% of the quick fish market. Despite not being regarded as a really nationwide chain at the time, LJS was making enough progress to justify purchasing regional network television and time. By 1990, Jericho wanted LJS to be a full-fledged network television advertiser and to have storefronts in every region of the nation. Jericho's other businesses at the time included a chain of Jerry's restaurants and other experimental restaurant ideas, such as the full-service Florence Italian restaurant, which had its start in Ohio. In 1988, Jericho also founded Grazzi's, its first fast-food Italian eatery. In order to avoid becoming unduly reliant on the LJS chain and its rising operational expenses, Jericho continued to increase its holding. This diversification was partly motivated by the consistently rising prices of Icelandic fish, a major menu item at LJS. Additionally, LJS was up against more competition from outside the sector, particularly from supermarkets and their suppliers who pounced on consumer desire for fast food that could be heated up at home. Fazoli's, a quick-service Italian pasta restaurant based on the Florence business, made its debut in 1989 under the Jericho brand. However, Jericho experienced some issues in the late 1980s due to the national economic recession and the high price of fish, and the business would soon go through significant adjustments. Talk of taking the company private through a management-led buyout first appeared when the stock value of the company started to wane as investors became concerned over decreased profitability. A corporation called Pisces Inc. Made up of a number of senior Jericho executives and a joint effort of Castle Harlan and DJS and Vanessa, both New York-based investment firms, acquired Jericho for $620 million in a leveraged buyout in September 1989. At the age of 67, Warren Rosenthal, the company's chairman of the board for 41 years, retired. According to reports, he received a $1.27 million executive severance payment in addition to the $57.4 million he obtained by selling associated equity interest, making him well compensated for his work in building the company. LJS, which had $826 million in sales in 1989, joined Pisces Inc. as a subsidiary. Following the takeover, Clinton O'Clark, a partner in Castle Harlan, joined the LJS board and was appointed president in 1990. Clark was tasked with guiding the business through the difficult, debt-ridden years immediately following the purchase. During his time there, Clark started the business's successful comeback. He came up with a mission statement for LJS that stressed supplying top-notch goods, guest satisfaction, team member respect, and a vision of excellence for the future. In 1990, the new parent firm made the decision to devote all of its resources to the LJS activities as part of Clark's efforts to refocus. Jerry's, Fazali's, and Florence, the company's other three restaurant concepts, were up for sale in order to achieve this. The largest franchisee of Denny's family stores in the U.S., Great American Restaurants, based in Atlanta, acquired the 46 Jerry's restaurants. The especially promising startup Fazali's was acquired by the Japanese-owned company Seed Restaurant Grouping. A 1991 closure of all seven Florence locations followed Jericho's failed attempt to franchise its seven Florence eateries. Jericho Inc., as it was known ceased to exist, and Long John Silver's Restaurants Inc., a more recognizable name, replaced it. LJS started customizing its menu in the early 1990s to address the escalating dietary concerns of its health-conscious clientele. The restaurant's product lines that grew the fastest were those that were grilled and broiled. During the Lenten season in 1991, the business debuted three hot meals that were all baked rather than fried and cost roughly $4. Mary Roseman, Director of Nutrition and Consumer Information at LJS, claimed in a February 1992 article in Restaurants and Institutions that when we can provide marketing support for the baked program, it generates good sales. But it's difficult to maintain interest when you're not on TV or not really hammering home the point. National advertising would not begin for LJS for another two years. Market trends at the time were not in LJS' favor. The share of industry traffic at fish and seafood specialty restaurants decreased from 2.8% in 1986 to 2.5% in 1991, according to one Illinois-based market research company. In 1991, additional non-seafood restaurants that were adding certain seafood products to their menus contributed to the quick-service boom sector. 
Due to the higher prices of several standard menu items and the increased competition, seafood restaurants are at a disadvantage in the quick service sector. If consumers were supposed to choose a seafood dinner over a cheaper hamburger and fries meal, value had to be increased. LJS Chainwide unveiled a new bargain menu in October. The add a piece menu allowed customers to add extra individual pieces of fried fish, shrimp, or chicken to any base dish for 69 cents or less. With a basic lunch costing about $1.99, the revised menu allowed for greater customer flexibility and the removal of unnecessary items. Clark, who had taken over as chairman in February 1992, effectively led the business through its transition from a public to a private status. In July 1993, he made an announcement of his resignation. Clyde E. Cole, a director of the business, was appointed president and CEO in October 1993. Culp's goal for the business was to use LJS's hegemonic position within the industry to reinvigorate the quick-service seafood sector. The first kiosk for the business debuted at the Louisville General Electric facility in Louisville, Kentucky, in the spring of 1993. Canteen Corp, a sizable contract food service provider owned by TW Services, was granted a franchise to operate the kiosk, known as Long John Silver's Express, which was a scaled-down version of the restaurant. The kiosk had a small menu with only four options for meals. About 1,200 more people participated in lunch at Canteen during its first three weeks of operation. Those LJS locations that offered drive through service saw an increase in sales of about 30% that summer, according to LJS. In a July 1993 article in Restaurants and Institutions, Bruce Cotton, LJS Vice President of Public Relations, explained that the company had to take into account the needs of a larger customer base. Fish wasn't something we initially thought would travel well, so we developed better carry-out containers and fish holding periods. Additionally, we switched to extra crispy, very heat-retaining fries. 85% of LJS locations had drive throughs by the beginning of 1996. LJS released their America's Favorite Shrimp Game tie-in with the premiere of the Universal Pictures film Little Rascals in August 1994 in an unusual advertising approach. In the August 1994 issue of Nation's Restaurant News, Joby Dixon, vice president of marketing and creative media at LJS, said that the company was aware of McDonald's and Burger King's movie, Fast Food Promotions, and that research shows that if you get a good, interesting tie-in, it can add some magic for the consumer that translates into extra visits. Both the movie and America's favorite shrimp game outperformed expectations, running longer than expected through mid-September. LJS proceeded to add these non-traditional places as a result of its earlier success with kiosks, focusing mostly on university campuses. The business debuted its first West Coast kiosk in September 1994 when it launched a storefront unit at California Polytechnic State University. According to John Ramsey, vice president of franchise development, the company thought college students would look for branded food names that they recognize from home. Students know our food will taste the same at Cal Poly as it does in their hometowns. This statement was made in a September 1994 issue of Nation's Restaurant News. From its 1,456 company-owned and franchised shops in 38 states, Canada, Singapore, and Saudi Arabia, LJS recorded system-wide sales of $923 million for fiscal 1994. Corporate revenues came to $643 million. LJS introduced the flavor-baked line of chicken breast and fish sandwiches, like portion products, lunches, and combo deals in the fall of 1994 as the most recent modification to its menu. LJS used network, cable television commercials and couponing to support the new items as part of a $5.5 million marketing campaign to promote the introduction, but buyers never took to the non-fried line. And by the beginning of 1996, it accounted for just 1% of all sales. Then there was Mr. Norman Bigfish, a comical spokesfish who oversaw a fresh advertising effort that debuted ahead of the 1995 London season. The campaign was not well received, and it was immediately abandoned after franchisees complained that the advertisements were driving away customers. These catastrophes caused LJS to reshuffle its top management yet again. In the wake of Culp's resignation in June 1995, Rolf Toe, whom CSFB had appointed chairman, became the organization's interim president and CEO. John M. Craner III was chosen as president and CEO in January 1996 following a protracted six-month search. Craner brought with him his knowledge gained while leading the fried chicken franchise KFC Corporation from 1989 to 1994. In July 1996, LJS announced a reorganization that included the closure of three divisional offices in Atlanta, Dallas, and Kansas City, Kansas, as well as the termination of 160 corporate positions. As for car branding, 
LJS had found some success with locations that shared space with either an Arby's or a Carl's JR. But a dual branding experiment with Taco Time International was an outright failure and was quickly abandoned. The company also nearly stopped expansion and put a stop to further co-branding efforts. The debut of wraps, a range of handheld wrap sandwiches with shrimp, fish, or chicken fillings in five different sauces, came about as a result of new product development activities in November 1996. The sandwiches, which cost $1.99 for a standard size and $2.99 for a large, were Long John Silver's most recent effort to take on the sellers of cheap burgers that ruled the fast food industry and to provide a healthier alternative to LJS's signature fried dishes. Although the additional items appeared to start off well, several owners and franchisees soon began to grumble that the new line had diverted the chain's attention and hampered service. The attempt to attract fast food consumers at the expense of LJS's core audience, which tended to lean slightly older and supported the chain's customary emphasis on more expensive dinner plans, was also criticized by some operators. A number of frustrated business owners established a franchisee association in the latter part of 1997 in an effort to exert more control over the company's operation. The new management team tried their best to increase the menu and make other changes, but the sales continued to drop steadily. System-wide sales fell drastically during fiscal 1998, from $902 million in 1996 to around $789 million. Corporate revenues decreased from $622 million to $565 million over the same time period. The corporation's massive debt load, some of which had interest rates as high as 18%, continued to be a hindrance. As a result, the company was forced to pay off debt rather than invest in business operation. Due to financial constraints, LJS was eventually compelled to seek Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in June 1990. At that time, the company's assets and liabilities totaled $329.1 million and $457.3 million, respectively. In addition, LJS declared that it would close 72 of its worst-performing locations and named an additional 80 as potential candidate. Long John Silvers entered a new phase in September 1999 when the owner of the N.W. Restaurants paid $227.5 million to rescue the business from bankruptcy. Sidney Feltenstein oversaw a turnaround at the long-established seller of hamburgers, hot dogs, and other fare, well known for its renowned tap root beer. He had led a group of investors that bought the A&W business in 1994. Feltenstein founded Yorkshire Global Restaurants Inc. As a new business is the organization that oversees both the NW and LJS. Since none of the debt that had plagued LJS for so long was transferred to Yorkshire, the chain's financial situation is the best it has been in years. Yorkshire's first headquarters were in Farmington Hills, Michigan, the same city where a NW had been located. However, soon after, Yorkshire and NW's offices were combined with those of LJS and Lexington. LJS started a number of fresh projects under Feltenstein's direction. The chain's new logo was created, remodeling of the stores, food quality improvements, and new marketing initiatives all took place. In a crucial move, LJS went back to its traditional position in the restaurant business, de-emphasizing fast food and repositioning itself as a quick experience restaurant that focuses on full meals and dinners and ensuring that guests are satisfied. According to Kevin W. Armstrong, Senior Vice President of Marketing, Quoted in a November 1999 Nations Restaurant News, compared to the slightly more than $22 million spent on advertising in 1998, there was an increase in spending to $40 million in 2000. Reiterating the benefits of dual branding was another crucial move, since Feltenstein had had experience testing out twin and W KFC locations. The possibility of dual and W Long John Silver's units was one of the key factors that attracted him to LJS. Given that LJS and its platters generated larger dinner sales and a W was more of a lunch attraction, the two restaurants made sense together. Customers who ate a Long John Silver's meal and then an NW root beer float for dessert presented additional possibilities. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, the first dual NW LJS store debuted in early 2000. By the year's end, there were around a dozen similar locations. Long John Silver started testing with locations co branded with KFC and Taco Bell via a license arrangement between Yorkshire and Triking Global Restaurants, Inc. Sales increased by at least 30% for stores that switched from carrying one brand to carrying two. Soon after, Yorkshire announced that it will be opening roughly 400 dual brand stores in the early 2000s. The two Yorkshire names were present in 121 co branded restaurants as of March 2003. Long John Silver saw another change of ownership as a result of the success of these multi branding initiatives. Triking Global executives made it apparent that they were solely interested in NW when talking with Yorkshire about a potential takeover since they thought LJS was a dying chain. 
However, Yorkshire insisted on keeping its two brands separate, almost killing the agreement. Triken gave up after discovering the higher earnings the dual brand LJS stores were making. Triken announced its plans to purchase Yorkshire in March 2002 for around $275 million in cash and $48 million in assumed debt. After the transaction was finalized in May 2002, Triken changed its name to Young Brands, Inc. Pizza Hut was the fifth of five significant American restaurant franchises in the Young portfolio at this point. Yum! added Long John Silvers as a division to its operations. After the takeover, Feltenstein continued to serve as the company's CEO, leading both LJS and NW. However, in 2003, he departed the organization, and Eilwyn Lewis took over as CEO of the two chains. Additionally, there were plans to move LJS and NW to the Yum! headquarters in Louisville while closing the Yorkshire offices in Lexington. LJS was anticipated to increase its involvement in multi-branded locations under its new, wealthier owners. The chain was anticipated to eventually dramatically increase its rather weak international footprint. Given that Long John Silver's was the most well-liked fast food brand among Hispanic Americans, the company seemed to have a lot of promise in other nations with a high concentration of Catholics. In the interim, a new $30 million nationwide television ad campaign with the tagline This is Seafood Country was introduced. For more fast food restaurant origins, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new content is uploaded.